Hello, boys and girls. I am Bob Whitey, and this is Trailers from Hell. Um, one weekend in 1968, when I was nine years old, my mother dropped off my brother and me at a split-screen theater, showing two different movies. My brother went into one theater, and I went into the other. Uh, after two and a half hours, these were both pretty long movies, we reunited in the lobby, and I told my brother I had just seen the best film ever. And he said, no, I've just seen the best film ever. Well, the film he had just seen was 2001, A Space Odyssey. And the film I had just seen was the musical Oliver. Well, my film won the Oscar that year for Best Director and Best Picture. 2001 wasn't even nominated for Best Picture, proving that my brother wouldn't know a great film if it beat him over the head with a taper bone. I'm kidding, of course. 2001 is one of the all-time greats, but it's already been covered here. So here is a look at this nine-year-old's pick for the best film of 1968, Oliver. Lisa, I want some more. More? I also wanted more when I first saw this film, and so returned to see it a few times, and I practically wore out the soundtrack album. When I watched the film recently, I found that I still had all the music and lyrics memorized. Some of that is probably because my brain was still so sponge-like when I was nine, but mostly it's because the music is that memorable. Credit goes to Lionel Bart, who wrote the book, music, and lyrics to the original stage musical in 1960. It's interesting that this trailer refers to the film as Lionel Bart's Oliver, since he neither directed the film nor wrote the screenplay. But it speaks to the popularity of the music adapted from the stage. Or Bart just had a really good agent. Okay, let's talk cast, starting with Ron Moody's Oscar-nominated performance as Fagin. You know, Alec Guinness was no slouch as Fagin in David Lean's 48 adaptation of Oliver Twist, but did Guinness have to sing and dance his way through the movie? No. Moody was only 44 when this film was made, yet the transformation into the iconic role of the old, lovable villain is seamless, and Moody will always be my Fagin. Oliver Reed plays the not-so-lovable villain, Bill Sykes. In fact, he's downright menacing and probably scared the hell out of me as much as Margaret Hamilton did in The Wizard of Oz. His most menacing lines are whispered, not shouted, and I do encourage you to hiss whenever he's on the screen. I also don't like the way he treated Shaney Wallace as Nancy, the tart with a heart, because she was an early screen crush of mine. Uh, the bustier may have had something to do with my special feelings for her, but it's a great role and she conquers it. As of this moment, Shaney Wallace is happily still with us at 86, which is hard to imagine. Sadly, her career never really took off in a big way after Oliver, though it certainly deserved to. I'll come back to the child stars in a minute. I want to mention the screen adaptation is by Vernon Harris, and the remarkable Oscar-winning direction is by Carol Reed, whose other big credit you'll know is The Third Man. I can't find any previous credit for Reed that suggests he'd be the right director for such a sprawling and lavish musical, but the choice was inspired. This film strikes me as a perfect adaptation from stage to screen. I mean, talk about opening it up. Nothing about this movie feels contained. And that phrase, a cast of thousands, provides an apt description. And even though the film was shot at England Shepperton Studios, you'll swear some of the more sprawling scenes were shot on location in a London that's been art directed back to the 19th century. Back to the kids. As the artful Dodger, we have Jack Wilde, who, like Mickey Rooney a generation earlier, a triple threat who could do it all, Wilde would become a teen heartthrob in the 70s, but excessive drinking and resulting bad health would wreak havoc on his personal and professional life, sadly bringing both to an early end in 2006. The titular role here is played by Mark Lester. He's pretty damn cute, and gives us an Oliver Twist who's extremely innocent and sympathetic. Lester went on to a good run as a child actor in the early 70s, and in recent years he's been in the news as the admitted sperm donor who may have fathered at least one of Michael Jackson's kids. Okay. Finally, a big shout out to Charles Dickens, a hell of a writer with a great future. There's a reason why Oliver Twist has been adapted countless times, along with most everything else Dickens wrote. He was as good a storyteller as the world has ever seen. In fact, this movie got me to read Oliver Twist at the age of nine, along with several other Dickens works. So I'm indebted to this film for introducing me to some of the world's great literature. But this film is a worthy adaptation of one of his most beloved books. Consider yourself advised to see it.